Hello, I am Swasti and I work at the Manohar Parikkar Institute for Defence Studies and Analyses where I specialize on the foreign policy, security policy, economics, politics, defense, etc. of Europe. And uh, there is a lot of turmoil happening in Europe right now and Europe is trying to reach out. And one of the key regions where Europe is trying to reach out is the Indo-Pacific. War games are regular events and important events among strategic partners and friendly countries. In the same league, the Australian Air Force is conducting its iconic war game called the Pitch Black after a hiatus of four years. In today's talk, I'll tell you about why it's making news, who are the new partners, especially from Europe, and what's in it for India. And finally, what does it all indicate towards countering the aggression of China in the South China Sea and most recently, regarding the dangerous brinkmanship in the Taiwan Straits after Nancy Pelosi's visit. In a reiteration of commitment towards the Indo-Pacific amid a volatile global order, 17 countries, including India, are participating in Pitch Black, which is, as I said, the Royal Australian Air Force's iconic biennial, which is once in two years, multinational exercise. While it is one of the several military engagements to reinforce the Indo-Pacific partnership among like-minded countries, Pitch Black 2022 stands out for an unusual display of enthusiasm by two of the European Union's biggest powers, France and a debutant, Germany. Both are participating with impressive military fervour and gusto. This enthusiasm is hitherto unheard of for a country like Germany whose critical engagement with the world is often purely economic, with its deep ties and dependencies on both Russia and China that it cannot afford instigating straight in the eye. Participating in the pitch black this year is unprecedented involvement of the only European resident Indo-Pacific power, that is France, which has been a part of this exercise earlier as well, but this year's involvement is unprecedented. Who else? The other major non-EU power, the United Kingdom, is participating too. But uh, UK is anyway a traditional ally of the US world over. So Pitch Black 2022 is a typical wargaming exercise where threats are simulated in a controlled environment to test force integration, interoperability and readiness. This year, it is unfolding in the skies of Northern Australia from uh, 19th August to about 9th September, which is roughly 20 days. The exercise is hosting about 2,500 personnel and up to 100 aircrafts, including participants from a whole host of countries, Australia, Canada, France, Germany, Indonesia, India, Japan, Myanmar, Philippines, Republic of Korea, Singapore, Thailand, the UAE, US and UK. In that sense, it is a convergence of the major NATO powers and partners, the Quad countries, the Five Eyes countries and almost half of the ASEAN. Two important trends deserve a mention. First, that Germany, Japan and Republic of Korea are participating fully for the first time. And second and more important, with the burgeoning participation of non-resident European powers, the two traditionally disconnected security theatres of Euro-Atlantic and Indo-Pacific are merging further, with converging contours slowly becoming more pronounced. Let's talk a little bit about Germany's impressive debut. One of the many tectonic shifts that uh, Putin's actions in Ukraine uh, precipitated in Europe was a reluctant Germany shaken up to face stark realities of its military unpreparedness, lack of a comprehensive security worldview and its asymmetric economic reliance on both Russia and China. When Olaf Scholz, leader of the three-party coalition, also called the Traffic Light Coalition, became Germany's chancellor a few months before the Ukraine war started, I think December 2021, he had aspired for a futuristic reform process with a goal to make the German economy resilient and play a bigger role in the EU's prosperity. And here is the key. 
This aspiration rested on stable energy supplies from Russia as an integral part of the plan. And we all know what happened to stable energy supplies despite best efforts from Germany to contain the conflict from turning into a full-fledged war. It didn't happen. That said, the current German realization of looming dangers in Europe appears contradictory because simply put, it can neither do with Russia or China nor without them. Therefore, Germany's outreach to the Indo-Pacific is a variable that is directly connected with seeking a more comprehensive security for itself and Europe, but it is also operating beyond the constraining Russia-China matrix. The Indo-Pacific region is crucial to developing new forms of resilient economic cooperation and trusted connections, a bus that Germany doesn't want to miss and cannot afford to miss. Scholz has pledged significantly more defence spending on Europe's security and to provide a framework for this re-engagement, Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock presented the outlines of Germany's first national security strategy this year in March. Now, when taken in conjunction with another important document that connected uh, the economic and security interests of Germany and the Indo-Pacific, the German Indo-Pacific strategy that came in the year 2020 is also important. So when these two endeavours are taken together, they explain the journey of Berlin's strategic engagement with the Indo-Pacific. So from deploying a, uh, you know, a frigate called Bayern, uh, on a half-year-long mission to the Indo-Pacific to directly follow up on its revamped security policy and now participating in the pitch black, Germany has indeed shown some credible commitment. This credibility is further proven by the size of one of the largest peacetime deployments of the German contingent. For the pitch black this year, Germany has sent 13 aircrafts comprising six Eurofighter jets, about three A330 tankers and four A400M transporters. Germany has called it Rapid Pacific 2022 deployment and the aim is to reach Singapore within 24 hours and then quickly deploy to Darwin and Australia's northern coast. Now you see to all who are listening and reading between the lines, the German Air Force chief has said that we want to demonstrate that we can be in Asia within a day. Following pitch black, the German Air Force fleet will train with the Republic of Singapore's Air Force and uh, sub-fleets will also visit uh, Japan and South Korea. What does it mean that they are there to stay? Does that mean Germany will be touching China's sword points as well? The short answer is no. Much like the frigate Bayern that did not touch the contested regions in the South China Sea or in the Taiwan Straits, German jets would steer clear of these two regions as well. It is evident that reckless taking a bull by its horn is not in Berlin's strategic calculus for engaging the Indo-Pacific. Germany's overtures are aimed at overseas power projections in key strategic locations, especially as tensions are on an all-time high in the Indo-Pacific and contributing with like-minded partners in preserving an order that Germany considers most conducive to its own interests and values. Let's talk about France now. So while Germany's impressive debut is a salient strategic shift, the case of France is even more interesting because it is indicative of a significant reset of fractured France-Australia relations from the stab in the back, the infamous AUKUS submarine deal. I hope you all remember that. For France then, reset has come from a realization of a larger convergence matrix over upholding a rules-based order and freedom of navigation in high seas. These fault lines were not conducive for exploring the joint potential of Europe's Indo-Pacific outreach by and large. However, that does not imply that the internal tensions among European powers are all, all settled. They compete, they have their own conflicts. France, however, is the only resident European power in the Indo-Pacific with territory and citizens. Uh, during the 2019 Shangri-La Dialogue in Singapore, 
France unveiled the French defense strategy in the Indo-Pacific, which was completed, I think, next year in July. Let's talk a little bit about how significant is France's military presence in the region. You see, France is the only EU country to have permanently pre-positioned forces in the Indo-Pacific and regular warship sub uh, submarine or aircraft deployments as well. France systematically carries out high-level joint exercises with its strategic partners such as India, Japan and the US, also Indonesia, Singapore and Vietnam from the ASEAN countries in Southeast Asia. France has the required assets to facilitate the maritime security of this region with ballistic missile submarines, aircraft carriers and naval bases. Like Germany has a name, France has also codenamed its pitch black deployment Pegas 22, which aims to demonstrate its capacity for long distance air power projection. In a tactical and strategic sense then, both France and Germany are playing what is called politics of presence in the region. While the Germans have been more careful about not instigating China, the French comparatively have been more direct and provocative, if I may say, in their approach to China as uh, the 2020 naval deployments that included a nuclear submarine in the region would suggest. So uh, behind the politically correct optics of upholding values in the Indo-Pacific, playing up the politics of presence, there is a wariness which is brewing towards the militarization in South China Sea, the recent dangerous brinkmanship in the Taiwan Straits, a return of great power rivalry and plain words, containment of China's self-professed belligerence for unilaterally altering the status quo. You see, the jagged ends of China's meteoric rise have cut through the fragile edifice of liberal order that no one country, regardless of military capabilities, could handle on its own. Rickling out of global dependencies on Beijing's economic statecraft will take sustained efforts at multiple intersectional levels if international law has to prevail despite flagrant breaches. Now, after discussing France and Germany, let us see what is India's participation in this mega event all about. So Indian Sukhoi 30s and C-17s are also participating in the Pitch Black 2022 as India enjoys its central position in the key strategic maritime domain of Indo-Pacific. India's approach, however, is centered on the positive interpretation of cooperation with friends and partners rather than overtly containing the elephant in the room, which is China. The purpose of all these maneuvers in the Indo-Pacific or elsewhere for that matter uh, is to convey something very valid to China which is that China has to realize, has to be made to realize that its meteoric rise is not a zero-sum game. It cannot stop other countries from pursuing their own national interest. The question is, will China listen? I'll be back again with uh, analyzing how far can we do it.